Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 81 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, where today I'd like to get back into mechanism reactors. Uh, what I'd like to do today is build a larger fission reactor that's going to be cooled by sodium, uh, so a salt reactor, that is then going to need a new multi-block, uh, the, 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 the boiler, I think it's called, or something like that, I don't know, something that cools off things, right? It'll take, the, take in water and hot salt from the fission reactor and output cooled sodium and steam into our uh, turbine. So I'm going to build a new reactor, the new multi-block, and a new bigger turbine that will hopefully support all the heat and steam and stuff we're getting. And my goal is twofold. One, I want to make more power. <laughs> Believe it or not, uh, my power production is paltry. My million RF tech just ain't enough. I need more. I need more. I need more. Because uh, my my I've got you know a lot stored back here, but I still don't have like a ton, not a ton, you know, sixty billion RF seems like a lot. Not gonna last that long. I would like to I would like to get that thing filled up like a little bit crazier. I'd also like to produce more um, uh, 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 nuclear waste so that I can produce more antimatter and start playing with the antimatter stuff because we've got a little bit. We've got a little. We've got five hundred and three millibucks of antimatter, so we're about half. A bucket of antimatter. Can buy antimatter be stored in a bucket? Probably not. But anyway, um, you know, if, if we wanted antimatter, uh, the the pellets, we're going to need, you know, a thousand millibuckets of it in a chemical crystallizer. So it's going to take a little bit of time to get that. And there's a few antimatter gadgets I'd like to play with. There's not a ton. What's this do? Anti-protonic nucleosynthesizer. I don't even know what that does. Machine that uses bits of antimatter and mass amounts of energy. Oh, that's the thing that does uh, these things. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that does. Oh, neat. And it outputs what? Polonium? Okay, cool. Antimatter. I don't see how much it outputs, but yeah, that's cool. It transmutes stuff. So wool turns into blocks of redstone. That's cool. Coal into diamonds for four antimatter. Diamonds into emeralds for four more antimatter. Probably some cool stuff we can do with that. Not too shabby. So I want to play with, uh, you know, basically bigger reactor, check out the way the salt thing works, bigger turbine, more, uh, you know, power, basically. Power is going to be a, a playing a big role here. I want more power because as we know, the this guy is using like, you know, millions and millions and millions of RF a tick. It's going to burn through our power production like nobody's business. And that's why I want to have lots of power production. The other thing I want more power production for is we updated the pack. Uh, there is a new version of the Direwolf 20 pack out there that includes RF Tools Dimensions. And as we know, RF Tools Dimensions tend to take a lot of power. Now, here's the deal with RF Tools Dimensions. Uh, things have changed, and I don't know how. So there's definitely new things, right? Um, which is cool, right? I, I don't know how any of this works yet. I haven't looked into it at all. I just know that there are differences. Uh, but I definitely want to check it out, right? I want to see... Ooh, look at that admin dimlets, huh? That's cool. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of dimlets here, obviously, and there's things we want to mess with. So, RF Tools Dimensions is added to the pack. Uh, the pack now officially includes Chunk No Go Bye Bye, so that's going to be, if you update the pack, it'll be there. You don't have to add it yourself anymore. Uh, and then all kinds of mod updates. Um, quite a few. I know Foregoing got the mob duplicator, I want to say, is back. Remember that thing that we said was missing? It's back. Hooray! Um, I know that... Um, Man and Artifice got some big updates, right? I'm pretty sure about that. So yeah, there was a big update to this that adds a whole bunch of features and stuff that we're gonna wanna check out at some point. Oh, that's cool. Uh, so yeah, there's there's things, right? There's things that we're gonna wanna do. I think this is the version that adds JEI integration. Is that? Ooh, look at that, that's cool. Neato burrito, I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, what was the big one that was always like a hassle to make? Oh, look at that. Mana weaving altar recipes. Nice in JEI. That is beautiful to see. Nice. JEI integration. Hugely welcome there. So yeah, new version of the pack available. Definitely feel free to grab it. Uh, what I want to do today, like I said, is work on a bigger reactor. So what I want to do is build a big one of these. So this guy is 7x7x7, seven by seven by seven, right? What if we went 11x11x11? 11 by 11 by 11? Would that be cool? So I did a little bit of math here. I know roughly how much stuff. I'm going to kick off the crafting um from mechanism reactors uh i got a lot of this stuff i'm gonna want more reactor glass i don't even know what i'm gonna do though. so that's gonna be a nine by nine so that's 81 per side right and we're gonna want four sets of those yeah so like 320 ish sounds like a good number to request shouldn't be too bad make it so um 
So let's start off with building the bigger reactor, right? And what I'm going to do is I've got these areas chunk loaded. I'm going to try and make this, you know, reasonably sized, right? So we want this to be 11. All right. I've done a better job at placing blocks in my day, but you know. There we go. Sweet. Now I know building gadgets can place these, but they are tile entities, and it's not supposed to be able to place them. So I don't know why it does. But, you know, bugs and whatnot that I've not had the chance to go look into. But we're going to build a massive nuclear reactor, right? This is going to require a lot of components, and hopefully I have the resources to produce everything I need to produce. I don't even know. So there's your base foundation, right? And then we're going to go up, you know, 10 blocks. And that should be cool, right? So that's 11 total, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Sweet. All right. So what I'm going to do is uh, build the rest of this off camera for the most part. Because you guys don't need to sit here after me build this thing. And then we'll come back and then we'll start looking at what's involved in, 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 the, in the sodium cooling bit. And then the boiler to cool it off and turn it into steam. Cool? So be right back. All right, so if my memory serves correctly, we want control rods like every other one or so here, right? Pretty close. And hopefully I masked this correctly. I'm not sure if I did, but we'll find out very soon. And then uh, I totally took a swag at the number of fission rod dudes we would need, but this should be the right number of control rods at least. Nice. I did do it correctly. Nice. All right. Uh, and then fission rod dudes. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit short, but basically each one of these needs to come to the ground with that. Cool. So I'll be back in a minute when that's done. I think I can probably do this with this, which is not, you know, a great idea, but whatever. If it's working, we'll find out if it breaks anything. <laughs> it's a good way to do it, right? Now, in fairness, I don't think that's going to come all the way down, right? Uh, so I want to be prepared for that eventuality. What I should do is if I stood like one layer down from there, I think we would be cool. So let me fill in the rest of you guys and then we'll I'm going to just build this off camera and come right back. All right, that's feeling pretty good, right? Uh, so then we're going to want some reactor ports, right? So we're going to want to do similar to what we did in the other place, right? We're going to want a input for um, that stuff, right? The, the fuel input will go there. Uh, I'm thinking we're going to want a sodium input as well. That's going to be our coolant. Maybe here can be sodium. Would that be neat? And you guys can be inputs, right? And then we're going to want... Uh, a waste output, which I haven't exactly... Actually, you know what? Maybe this should be waste output. Let's do that. Kind of like we have this one over here, right? So you're that. Where's my waste output on this guy? I forget. Yeah, he's kind of in the front. So yeah, let's do that. So, you know, yeah, that works for me. So you're going to be the waste output. Output waste. You're going to be input for that. Back here, I'm going to have sodium input. And then over here, we're going to have coolant output. And uh, yeah, the hot coolant, obviously. Output coolant. All right, so what's your beef, stranger? Why do you know for him? Probably because, boop, boop. Yay, look at that, multi-block. Nice, cool. Uh, so that can do things. So his max burn rate is 328. Far higher than the 50 millibuckets per tick we were doing in the last one. We're gonna set you to one for now, because I don't want you to go crazy, but we're gonna get there. All right, cool. So then um, what I need is my quantum entangleopers. I'm gonna need two of these to be completely honest with you guys. So let's start up those crafts of another one. That shouldn't take too much time. What I've done is I tapped into, whoop, in my basement here, I, pr I prepared this between episodes, this. So I've now got dumping excess of chlorine because brine splits into chlorine and sodium, remember? So I'm already storing large amounts of sodium in an ultimate chemical tank, and I already set up a sodium-based 
quantum entangle over. So I'm gonna use that to pump sodium into this thing, and that's gonna be your coolant here, okay? So that's gonna go back here. So we're gonna have a quantum entangle over set to sodium, okay? And we're gonna have an ultimate pressurized tube like so, and your side config will be gases output top eject on. And that should now be pumping sodium into this guy for coolant. Now his coolant tank seems to be pretty large, so we're gonna take note of that. Um, I don't know how much sodium we're going to need. I'm questioning at this exact moment whether we're gonna need more. We may. <laughs> I'm, I'm suddenly seeing that I can't even see this bar. <laughs> That's worrying. That's worrying. Uh, where does it tell me how much sodium is gonna be in here? I have no idea. But I thought, I thought the amount of sodium we had would be a lot, and now I'm very concerned that it's not going to be even nearly enough. Um, that ultimate tank was not full all the way, and I, yeah, we're not even close, are we? Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit close. So we're gonna totally want more sodium. Uh, we'll figure that out. I'll, I'll probably have to like build a larger brine multi-block at some point, maybe, we'll see. How are you doing now? Yeah, you're you're getting there, right? So we're, we're definitely producing. So we're at a million millibuckets or a thousand buckets of sodium. And I'm literally not seeing this bar filled at all. Like, I don't even see a smidge. Unless, nope, definitely not a smidge. Not even a little bit. So, uh, that's a thing. It's a funny thing. Let's get, uh, let's get our other quantum entangle over that we're going to have here. And as a reminder, you can't quantum entangle over um, nuclear waste. So keep that in mind. That's a thing that we're going to want to keep in mind. No nuclear waste quantum entangleoping, right? You here can just straight up be fissile fuel set your um, gases output on the back. Fissile fuel. Gases output eject on do thing. Hey, there we go, fissile fuel. Nice. Yeah, also a very large capacity tank for that. I mean, we built an 11 by 11 reactor, much larger than the small 7 by 7 by 7. So, I mean, it's expected that this thing's going to be pretty huge. So, yeah, it's working. We're cooking. So, we're getting a small amount of... Yeah, we're totally going to need more sodium. I'm 100% going to need a larger one of these. I think... I'm not sure exactly what dictates the thermal evaporation tank, but I could probably make them a little bit bigger. Thermal evaporation block. My gut tells me what I'm going to want to do is build another one of these. That's what my gut's telling me, but we'll see. I'm going to make them a little bit bigger and just see what effect that has on the... So we're at 240 millibuckets per tick. It's kind of our limit right now. Just, I mean, it's a lot. Decent amount, but could be bigger. So if I give you a larger... Tank size. Yeah, now you're up to 300 millibuckets per tick. Beautiful. 420 millibuckets per tick. All right, cool. So, I mean, it's a combination of the heat that we're pumping in, which I bumped up to 500 forge energy per tick, and, and this. So there's a limit to how much it can produce based on size. So basically, more heat equals more uh, stuff, more, more brine, up to a limit. And by the way, because we weren't producing enough water on our pump here, I did throw a sink from cooking for blockheads. Um, I know sink. I know it's a thing you can do. Just, you know, things. So that's more brine and more sodium production uh, going on, which is nice. Just got to figure out if there's going to be more of that to happen. I might need another one of these, to be completely honest. And if I do, then I'll figure that out. Maybe I'll sneak it like back here. I'll build a like larger area. That's what I could do. Is there anything wrong with doing that? I don't think so. Any reason I can't do this? Just have a larger one of these, like also feeding into this guy, right? I feel like that's doable, yeah. I mean, that's doable. Yeah. So you could be, you know, a decent sized thermal evaporation block. Let me do that real quick off camera. Be right back. 
You know what? I could have sworn the thermal evaporation plant would have been cool having, you know, uh, a, a wider base. But now that I'm remembering it a little bit, no, it does not. No, it doesn't. Uh, it's 100% all about 4x4, four four, so it has to be a 4x4. Four four. So let me see how many of those 4x4s four I could fit in here, because I bet I could do like four 4x4s, four four and that would be kind of cool, right? I feel like that would be neat. Yes. Yeah, so something like this maybe? All right, so here's my basic layout, right? We've got resistive heaters down here that are going to heat both sets of multi-blocks, and then we've got ultimate mechanical pipes in the middle that are going to extract from both sets of multi-blocks, right? So then your basic gist is we put this here and this here, and then you can be an extractor for that guy once I've got, you know, the multi-block formed all the way, and that would be cool, right? And then we can have water coming in, I don't know, here. doesn't really matter. I haven't planned out that side's water yet, but you get the idea, right? So at least we're kind of sharing sides on things, right? So then I, whoop. how did you get into wrench mode? I didn't put you in wrench mode. Boo, boo, I never put you in wrench mode. I promise. There we go. So that's, that's that, right? And then you're extracting and then everybody's, oh yeah, so you went into brine mode, didn't you? I didn't want that. Can I break you? And will that reset the, oh no, you didn't reset, did you? You're probably like being all smarty pants about it. Liquid lithium, huh? I might have to break this whole thing, but you get the idea. All right, I believe they are all producing now. Sweet. All right, so they're all formed. Uh, I think they look pretty nice, right? Not bad back here, not bad in here, all right? So see how they're kind of, yeah, that works out pretty well actually. So that should be good. Uh, and then it all just feeds directly into this thing, uh, which feeds directly into that guy. Now, I don't know if it matters. that uh, It doesn't matter if this is basic and ultimate, because I don't think we're going to hit... What's basic do again? Uh, basic mechanical pipe. 4,000 millibuckets per tick capacity. Yeah, maybe I should replace you. I feel like that might not be a terrible idea. Right? Make sure that you're still doing water to brine, right? Yeah, that should be cool. And that's doing good. And then you want to go into there for the purposes of doing that. Excellent. Cool. All right. So decent amount. Are you guys still gaining heat? Yes. So they should all eventually hit 420 millibuckets per tick, which will be good. So now that that's all cooking, let's check in on our power at the moment. Not bad. See, 58 billion RF stored. So definitely not like a lot. Now, how are you doing? Wow, you've got, hey, look, I can see a sliver. I can see a sliver of coolant. <laughs> wow, that's gonna take a long time to fill up, isn't it? It sure is. I have no idea how much that's gonna need, but I guess we'll figure it out. So anyway, while we're waiting for that to fill up with sodium, which may involve waiting between episodes for a little bit, I may do some off camera standing around doing nothing for a short time. Let's look into the boiler. So I think what we want from mechanism is a boiler. Now I have no idea what an optimal size this is. I have no idea. I'm gonna be completely honest. I've looked online and I haven't seen a lot of recommendations around it. There's like some complex math. So if you wanna like get into the math of it all, you totally can. It's up to you. Um, but what I'm gonna do is just build a pretty big boiler and a pretty big turbine and hope it all works out. That's my plan. And if it doesn't work out, maybe we have to expand the size of it. I don't know. We'll find out. So the boiler is made up of four-ish parts. Uh, so there's the boiler casing itself. Uh, I don't know if there's glass that the boiler can have. I would like I would like to see glass. I think there is. I'm pretty sure there is actually. I'm almost certain there is. Um, so let's see, where's this boiler detail? Um, yeah, so you can use structural glass for your boiler. So I added that to my to-do list. So what we're gonna need is boiler casings, boiler valves, and then we're gonna need some number of superheating elements, which don't look terrible to make. Uh, and then there's pressure dispersers because basically it's a giant tank. You're building a giant multi-block tank and there's gonna be a layer within which water can go. And then there's gonna be a layer within which steam can go. So I'm gonna try this out. I don't super know what I'm doing, but we're gonna figure it out. So basically our, our this thing's gonna come out here. I'm gonna also want real quick while I'm here, uh, another fission reactor port. I want another input here. So I'm gonna set that up real fast. 
Cool. And you still retain all your things, so that's good news. That's good news this time. I'm gonna give this thing, let's see. I'm gonna start building the boiler in this chunk, because I kind of don't want them crossing chunk boundaries if we can. And if I'm gonna go for silly, uh, I think that's what I'm gonna go for. Why don't we just do 11 by 11 boiler, right? So that's fair, I think. So we're gonna need lots of boiler blocks. I'll be right back. All right, <clears throat> so sticking with the theme of 11 by 11, let's, let's just do that. That looks good, right? And then we should be able to build and gadget these because, you know, again, it's just a thing that seems to work now. All right, so what I've gone and set up is this is the output for the for the hot steam, right? That's what this guy's set to, right? Uh, output coolant, right? And this guy is inputting colder coolant, right? Uh, and then conversely, we've got over here, I've got an input for hot coolant or water. We're gonna input water in the back. And then output cold coolant. So basically what's gonna happen is the, the, the reactor with the fissile fuel is gonna heat up the sodium and then the sodium is gonna pump into here and turn steam or turn water into steam. So we have to input water, we have to input hot sodium, and we will output cooled off sodium, and we will output steam. Cool? Now to go along with this, we also need uh, some of those super condensers, superheating elements. Uh, and then we also need the pressurized dispersers. So the deal with these are, you can place X number of these in here. I'm just gonna fill the bottom because I think it'll look cool. But I don't know that you have to fill the bottom. Uh, there's, there's math behind how many of these you need. I made enough to fill the bottom because resources are not a problem for me, okay? There's math for you to figure out how many you need. That's basically the gist of what you need to know, right? So, now I actually don't think the hot steam is gonna come out here. I'm actually thinking it doesn't. I'm gonna put structural glass there. The hot steam is gonna come out the top. And what I'm gonna do is in the top here, I'm gonna one layer below the top, I'm gonna to start placing my pressurized dispersers. And we're gonna do this. Boop, 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 boop. And there should be one more pressurized disperser here. And that should be cool. And then it's the pressurized disperser layer that we want to have the steam output on. Kind of like we do in the other area. So that's going to be the boiler valve here with output steam set. And then use structural glass. Hooray, it formed. Look at that. Cool. Thermoelectric boiler. And this is going to have a maximum amount of water, a maximum amount of steam, number of superheaters, boil capacity. There's a lot of math behind this. I honestly don't know half of it. I just didn't feel like doing math today. <laughs> so I'm like, eh, let's just build a big one and hope it works. That's the plan. I don't feel like doing math today. We're just gonna build a big one and hope it works. Uh, but that's the gist, right? So the superheating elements there are what are gonna take the the hot water and, and do the thing, right? So let's now get a sink because that's our, that's our play these days is we're making sinks. Uh, so I'm just gonna need a bucket. Give me like, I don't know. Oh, I have some buckets, cool. Boop. And you're gonna go there, and you're gonna go here, and you're gonna go ultimate mechanical pipe, and then you're ready to roll. Now we might need more than you know this, but we'll figure it out. Hey, hey, hey! Look at the water go. Yeah, remember sinks are OP. <laughs> they are. You know, it's just you know, it's a fun thing. But hey, there's you know, in a second or two, fourteen thousand buckets of water produced. Sweet. So heated coolant will come. What do you guys know? Okay. No, oh, thank you, Trader Llamas. Enough with the wandering. Enough with the wandering. Nobody wants you guys here, right? So I actually did pretty good on the math for most part. Um, so then we're going to want, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a gas that's going to transfer between these two. So we're going to want pressurized tubes, right? Basically, I want you to go across to here and then you to go across to here. And, and technically, it's it's this coming out going this way, right? To fill back up the sodium in the coolant tank. Now, 100% no idea what I'm doing. 
This Isle of Fuel we are not getting any more of, so I'm a little concerned. I'm assuming we ran out of something over here. We ran out of yellow cake uranium. Really? We're out of uranium again? Yes. Why, yes, we are. Remember last episode I looked and I'm like, oh, yeah, I got like 2,000 uranium. It's fine. Yeah. Nah. No. Nah. Not anymore. I really need to, like, infinite uranium myself. I'll figure it out. Hey, there's... there's. How did you spawn all the way up there, Wanda? Meow. 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 Um, do I want to, like, just turn this on for a second and see if it all behaves the way I think it will? Yes? Yes? But I also want to have a radioactive waste barrel. So let me get one of those. Uh, ready to output, you know, this. With this guy. Ready to do that. Right? And that should be cool. So you've got... Yeah, should we do it? Fissile coolant, and we'll just see what happens. All right, I'm turning it on for like just a second. You ready? And really low burn rate, by the way. Hey, wow. Look, look, it's doing things. Heating rate, okay, cool. So if I scram you now, we are still incoming with sodium, so that's cool. And what did you have happen over here? Superheated sodium. Water tank, steam. Nice, okay, cool. So should we try bumping this up to like 10 instead of one? Activate? Oh yeah, see, he, he definitely consumed a bit of coolant. He definitely consumed a bit of coolant. But look, what's happening is the coolant is, oh boy, hold on, scram. Steam is happening. We are not getting water fast enough. <laughs> this is what we learned. <laughs> we have to be a little careful. We have to be a little careful, right? Water, definitely not enough. Now, to be fair, to be exceedingly fair, I'm not doing anything with my steam, right? So I have not yet turned steam into power. That's a thing that we're absolutely going to need to do. 100%, um, no doubt about it, we need to turn steam into, into power so that we get the water back. And then we'll have a closed loop of water and not be too worried about it. Cool? I think so. I think that's cool. So, yes. Uh, progress. Cool. Lots of sodium. Lots of fissile fuel. Need more uranium. Uh, should get my digital miner ready to roll. Uh, we're going to get our flux dude ready to roll. Flux point, yes. And then the chest. Um, and what I'm going to do probably between episodes here is focus on getting a bit more uranium. Now, I know I've kind of like randomly gone around the world plopping this thing down i've i've not been very methodical about it right i've not been methodical at all about it but yeah there's lots we can get here and then you can do the dial pointing network and if we really want to rush things we can rats it up go go dire rats you guys are the best boop go miner go look at it go look how great it is you guys are awesome thank you rats Thank you, rats. You can see I added diamond ore, by the way, because we just have been woefully low on diamonds our entire life. So, you know, diamonds is now in the mix. Fluorite's definitely in the mix because uh, that has been a thing we've been woefully low on. So, you know, I'll just I'll just run a couple batches of these. <clears throat> and uh, what I think we're going to do is wrap up the episode here. Let me see. I'm pretty sure we're at that point, right? Pretty close, at least. So we'll wrap up here. We'll come back next time. And what I'm going to do is build a really large boiler. And then we're going to test out this whole salt reactor thingy. Because um, in theory, I should be able to run this thing way hotter and burn through uh, fissile fuel a lot faster. Now, obviously, my problem therein becomes we barely have enough fissile fuel when it's not running, right? So we're going to have to do something about that. <clears throat> What we're going to do, I'm going to figure out next episode. For now, Darwell20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy. Hey, look at all the steam up there.